nothing better. There's no well, it is officially one o'clock, so we are going to get started. Um, I'll just introduce a little bit while people start to filter in here. So a big welcome to anybody who's joining us today. Um, happy Friday. Thank goodness. We always love doing these on a Friday because it's the end of the week and you can mellow down now, hopefully for most. Um, and for me particularly, I am so excited about today's webinar. Um, for those who are joining who are new to the webinars, I am Lisa, founder of Marketing Training Academy Fabric, and my fabulous guest today is the unstoppable Amelia Sordell, who I'll introduce you to properly in a moment. Um, so you will all know today's session is all around personal branding, and I'm certain that most of you will probably have seen the words personal branding everywhere. It was all over the place, particularly the back end of last year. Um, it's just a hot topic of conversation. And, you know, sometimes in the past, personal branding has got a bit of a bad rap. Um, and, you know, it most definitely shouldn't. So we are going to be talking today about all of the positives around um, personal branding, um, why you should really embrace it and get on board with it. And, you um, how you go about doing it, um, and particularly probably how you get over some of those barriers to it, which I think lots of us will face the same sort of barriers. So we're going to be talking all about that when we get into um, Amelia's section. Um, for those of you who might not follow Amelia already, you absolutely should. Um, you need to see her socials to see exactly how this is done um, and done at the most amazing level. Um, Amelia obviously is a personal branding expert and has worked with huge clients, including the natural, uh, National Lottery um, and raised individual profiles, accelerated LinkedIn presence um, and also scaled businesses through this process. Um, Obviously, Amelia doesn't just talk the talk, as I mentioned before. Um, she absolutely shows this right across all of her platforms with over 73,000 followers on LinkedIn and 72,000 followers on TikTok. Um, so you can see for yourself how this works. And obviously, Amelia's personal brand is absolutely thriving. Um, I met Amelia last year and was so inspired by her story and her energy and enthusiasm for this that I wanted to bring her to you guys to share all of that. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Um, so if you haven't been on one of these webinars before, for the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to be talking over as much as we possibly can. Um, I'm going to be asking Amelia a series of questions and she is going to be giving us everything she can, expert tips, advice, her knowledge, um, what she's been through. Um, and then we're going to open the floor to you guys to ask some of your own questions. Um, now, you'll see the little Q&A box just at the bottom of the screen. Um, don't feel like you need to wait till that 30 minutes is up. Um, feel free to be popping questions in there as you go. We've got Maddie from Fabric in the background who is facilitating, so we will get to all of them, I promise, if we can, um, and try and uh, answer as many of your questions as possible. So, without further ado, I am going to introduce Amelia to you and let her uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, thank you for being here today, Amelia. Thanks for having me. <laughs> but I'm very excited to be here. It's been, as you said, it's been like a long time in the making, right? We, I think we initially spoke in like September or something last year. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. To be doing this. Um, <clears throat> sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, off the floor's yours. Just tell us, tell us a little bit about your journey before we get started, if you would. Where do I start? So I started personal. I didn't know I was doing personal branding, by the way, just for context. When I first started sharing content, should we say, I was a B2B marketing manager at a recruitment marketing, um, sorry, at a, at a recruitment agency. And it became very clear to me, like through doing all of our strategies and stuff, that almost all of our business was coming through individuals within the business. And so, of course, like my marketing brain is like, how can we scale that? Like, how can we get more kind of awareness around these amazing recruiters that we have in this business? Um, and when I started digging into it, I was looking at like the reach that personal profiles had versus company profiles and found that actually individuals have 10 times the, re 10 times the reach of a company brand. So my little marketing brain started squ squirreling away and I was like, well, it's really obvious, like the, recruit the recruitment consultants have to start sharing content on LinkedIn as much as we're sharing it on a company page. And of course, when I brought this idea to the recruiters, they were just like, whatever. <laughs> they, they like were like, you can't tell us what to do. Like, I was like, okay, well. I'm going to go and do it then and show you how easy it is. And then 
you know, hopefully they will see that I'm doing it and, and getting something from it and then they'll be inspired to do it themselves. So I started posting content around recruitment marketing and like my thoughts on specific campaigns and like campaigns I thought were going well and like what I'd learned and all these things. And I started like, it happened really quickly actually. I, I started with like, I think like 1200 followers or 1500 followers and I got to about 8,000 like rapidly. Like it was like, I wanna say about four months that took me to do that. And I was only posting like two times a week, maybe once a week sometimes, but being quite intentional intentional with what I was saying. And through all that content creation and sharing my ideas and stuff, I actually got headhunted by a VC because they saw I was doing all of this stuff online. They were like, you're really interesting. Like we want you to come and do that for our group of businesses. So I joined them as a result of sharing my own content. So for anyone that's kind of thinking in their career, like, you know, should I be doing this from that kind of perspective? Absolutely. Like that's how I found this job, which was significantly better paid in a better company and like all the things. Um, and then when I was at that company, I kind of built it up to about, this is LinkedIn, about 12,000 followers. And all of a sudden I started getting loads of DMs from people saying, how did you get 12,000 followers? Like, how come you have all these viral posts? And like, how are you getting a hundred reactions on content every single time? And so me being super lazy, instead of going back to them individually, was like, well, screw it. I'll just tell people on, yeah. on LinkedIn because it's so much easier for me to just do the whole scalability thing than it is for me to constantly copy and paste the same reply to all these people. Yeah. And as soon as I started talking about personal branding, I literally, I'm not kidding. It went from about 12,000 followers to 23,000 followers like that. Yeah. And then from 23, it went to 80 within a year. So it's like, as soon as I got really intentional with what I was talking about on, online and that this goes for personal branding or anything, any kind of topic, like you're very intentional with, with about marketing, Lisa. As soon as you get really intentional with what you're talking about and the message that you want to deliver, like you, people just gravitate towards you because what might seem go, like, got, like obvious to you is gold to other people. Um, and so once I started getting that kind of traction from people going, hey, like this is really cool that you're talking about personal branding. Like we didn't know this was a thing. like. And I was just giving all my tips away because, you know, at that point I wasn't an expert. I was just a couple of steps ahead of, of everyone else. Yeah. Um, the entrepreneur brain in me thought, oh, I should probably be charging people for this. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I set up Clout, which is um, the personal branding agency. And now we're, you know, how many months in? I don't know, nearly a year and a half in. Um, we have 25 retained clients. Um, we work with Skybet, Cummins, National Lottery, like really big companies and also really cool startups and scale ups. And yeah, it's it's been a wild ride, but I am buckled up and ready to keep going. Yeah, I mean, this is only going to go one way for you guys. So I'm so excited to watch the journey that you're going to be on. But just just a quick question around that. When was uh, when did this start? How long has this taken you to get to this point where you are now? Yeah, so I, I'd say I started posting content on LinkedIn in 2019, yeah. um, but like really not intentionally. Like it was just like, oh, like this is, I feel, because I'm, I'm without being like arrogant, I'm a, I'm a pretty good copywriter. So like my kind of, if you like best, I feel like every marketeer specifically has lots of different skills, but there'll be one thing that they're particularly good at. So you might be particularly good at strategy or particularly good at social media are particularly good at a number of different tactical things I'm particularly good at copywriting and so LinkedIn was a really natural forum for me and so it's so is Twitter like I'm growing my Twitter at the minute because it's a written format right whereas yeah. Instagram to me I'm like <laughs> because I find, I find having my picture taken really awkward so yeah. I'm fine uploading reels and, and TikToks and stuff because video is very natural for me but I just having my picture taken I literally look like the most awkward person in, in the world so um, I find Instagram a very hard medium so LinkedIn was really easy for me to just write yeah. my thoughts out and, and just and just get them out um so it's not about 1500 it, it grew I want to say to about 23,000 within eight months something like that 10 months um and then from 20 I started I started the the beginning of last year on 23,000 and then I ended it on 80 so there's in my opinion there's like levels to it so yeah. LinkedIn you get you get to 5,000 and that's really hard and then to get to 10,000 is even harder to go from five to ten once you hit ten it's then like or not easier but you sort of have that momentum where you start yeah. naturally building once you get to 25 you'll get a thousand fo new followers a week like it, yeah. it just happens naturally yeah so yeah, yeah. transparently it's taken a while two years at least to do this Right. Okay. Well, I've got a ton of questions. I'm pretty sure everybody on this call will have a ton of questions. So I'm going to get stuck in and see what we can cover today. Um, so I'm going to start with, I guess, the stigma a little bit around personal branding, because 
Um, you talk so positively about it, but you know, there is a lot of bad stuff out there around it as well. You know, it's egotistical, you know, it's arrogant. It can, you know, it can have a bit of a negative rap on it sometimes. What, why do you think that is? What's your, what's your opinion on that? I think it all comes down to one thing. We are hardwired as human beings to not raise eyebrows or ruffle feathers or um, upset our tribe because our million year old brain hardwired us that way so that we didn't get shunned from that tribe and therefore get eaten by saber-toothed tiger. Um, we don't get eaten by saber-toothed tigers anymore. And so this whole kind of consciousness of oh, if I put something out there and people think I'm arrogant or, oh, if I put something out there and people don't agree with me, that's your brain stopping you from reaching your potential. So as far as I'm concerned, I get a huge amount of people disagreeing with me on, particularly on LinkedIn. And I'm 100% okay with that. I'm 100% okay with people thinking that I'm doing this for, you know, I want lots of followers and look at me and like, I'm okay with people thinking that about me because they're not my people. Yeah. I, what I'm trying to do is to educate people as to why personal branding is so important and more importantly, practically help them do that. Like I give 100% away, away um, all, 100% of all my information away for free. I don't fox guard anything. And that's always been my strategy is if we know something about the platform, we'll tell you about it. If we know something that's working for us somewhere, we'll tell you about it because it doesn't serve me to be that company being like, oh, well, you have to, you have to spend money with us to do that because that's only going to stop me from being known as the authority in the space. So Anyone that thinks this is a ego driven activity has to kind of rewire their brain into thinking this is a marketing imperative that has nothing actually to do with my ego. If anything, it's very hum hum um, it's very uh, humbling because people will come to you and say, you're wrong, Lisa, or you're wrong, Amelia, and here's why. And they'll have very good evidence to back up why you might be wrong. And yeah. you have to have so much humility that you're willing to go, actually, you know what? I was wrong or actually, no, I, that's fine. You can have your opinion, but I still don't agree with you. Yeah. I actually think it's, you have more of an ego if you're worried about what other people are going to think about you than if you're just 100% okay with the consequences of being yourself. And I'm 100% okay with being the consequences of being myself. And I think that's a really important point that you made there. Sometimes it's just your own self stopping you from doing it. It's, you know, that perception that I might be seen as this, or I might say something wrong, but actually, does anybody really care that much? And, you know, as long as you're willing to take the good with the bad, and I guess the indifferent in between, um, you know, it's almost trying to get over, you know, those barriers yourself to just embrace it and, and you know, take it from there, maybe, I, see, I don't know. Um, I mean, you've obviously worked with some huge clients. Um, how can personal brand and positively impact businesses, first of all, rather than individuals here? So first and foremost, an individual within a business has 10x the reach of a company brand, right? So if you put that into context of, say, Skybet, who's, who's one of our clients, they have over 1,500 people in that business. If you had over just 10% of those people sharing content, you can already start to add, do the mathematics and understand how much more reach that they would have as a business versus if it was just the company posting stuff. So that's the first thing is impressions, reach. You will tap into communities that you otherwise would not be able to access, period, as a brand. Um, the second thing is, as a talent attraction tool, it's gold. Like before we even got, you know, started recording this call and everyone joined this, this session, Lisa and I were talking about how difficult it is to hire really good people. Like it's, you know, it's not that people aren't skilled. It just might be that they haven't got the right personality or the right attitude or something has to fit within your current setup in order to make that person excel in your business. And hiring those people is really, really difficult. When you have lots of personal brands within a business, candidates qualify themselves in or out of your business before they've even applied like they they want to see thought leadership i think there was a study done and i can absolutely share the the link to this at the end of the session but there was a study done that said 60 percent of candidates value thought leadership as their number one source of getting um, information from a potential employer so candidates want to see thought leadership within a business in order to understand whether or not you're the right business for them and i know every single business has an issue with hiring like it is the number one problem for every single business is hiring good people so talent attraction employer branding is really really incredible like we Anytime we're hiring, we just say we're hiring and we get like 500 applications straight away. Yeah. yeah. Um, and actually we get CVs sent to us all the time. Um, I headhunted someone recently. Um, all I did was DM them and say, hey, like we're looking for this person, like would be interested to in, see if you'd have, want to have a chat. She's like, oh, I've been following you for a year. I would love to. <laughs> like, so she was already like, yes, I'm working for you. Like there was no, there was no convincing needed because yeah. she 
started our journey and was really bought into what we were trying to do. So from a talent attraction perspective, it's huge. Um, also, you've, you've got to kind of look at personal branding as if it's a brand awareness top of funnel thing, right? It's really difficult to measure reputation. It's really difficult to measure your net promoter score. It's really difficult to measure the fuzzy feeling that you give people when you're putting out a piece of content. However, I bet if you started doing this and you did it for a year and you were committed to it and you invested the money to do it properly, if you did it for a full year and got the whole company involved and said, this is the strategy we're going to take, in a year's time, you would look back at all your CRM and I guarantee you will see a visible increase in not only your inbound you know, things coming in and your revenue or things, but also in the tr attribution to social media channels. Oh, I saw, you know, um, uh, Lisa post this thing on LinkedIn. It really resonated with me. So I'd love to talk to you guys about that thing. Um, the Go Agency is a really good example of that. And anyone that wants to hear the practicalities of how they did it, I did, I've done a podcast with their, one of their co-founders, which is actually live, but we're not meant to say it's live because it's actually meant to be going live on Monday, but it's already up if anyone wants to see it on Spotify or Apple. Um, oh. In that, Harry talks about um, how, you know, they did this whole personal branding thing for the whole company um, for a year and they can attribute, now they're a couple of years in, they can attribute about 8 million quid in revenue to, to it. And they spent yeah. about total investments of about half a million in getting it done. It's, more, it's wild, isn't it? Because it's I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, you know, particularly we all know now marketing is so expensive. It has to be so, so strategic, so focused to get any type of really good return. Um, and it's strange because I think there's a perception or there has been in the past that businesses have this worry about or panic about their individual people and particularly their top people, you know, being actively promoting themselves on, on LinkedIn, particularly again, um, in case that, you know, in case they're headhunted or in case somebody, you know, you know, in case they move, but you know, the whole point about retaining staff is looking after them well it's not about being worried about them being headhunted right so you know those figures speak for themselves it's got huge advantages for business growth right I just want to pick a hole a little bit of what you said there because yeah. I feel so strongly in my bones two things number one if your team aren't being headhunted then you haven't got a good enough team yeah. my, my team get dm'd daily by recruiters because they go oh they work which is great for me because it means that we're doing a good job right but people go oh they work for clout and like clout are doing great things so they must be a great person so my team just get peppered and we all laugh about it in the team meetings they're like oh did, did anyone get approached by this company so they're like yeah me and it's <laughs> like a weird thing but I look after them and so I never worry about the fact that they might leave because I know I'm doing my best as an employer to keep them and guess yeah. what if they leave there's probably not much I could have done about it as long as I am doing my best to support them and help them grow that's all I can do if they feel like they need to go to a different organization in order to better their career I will send them with the best wishes and say hey remember us like as the company that helped you get there yeah the goal for my business is for everyone to have ex like anyone that's left the business to have x clout in their headline on link on linkedin like you never see x you know spotify google whatever if people say that about us and they advocate for us after they've left my job here is done Absolutely. the second thing about that is if you were if you're worried about what people are going to say online as employees you don't have a problem with what they're going to say online you have a problem with your people or worse you have a problem with your leadership because your leadership is so egotistical and controlling that they're yeah. so terrified of not controlling the message that's going out that they won't let it happen i would be way more upset if my team said something wrong in a client meeting than if yeah. they said some post online about periods or something yeah. like yeah. it's irrelevant it's social media they are building something that's going to benefit me if they said the wrong thing in a client meeting that affects my bottom line so yeah. you know let yeah. them in front of clients for god's sake let them in front of their social media yeah 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 and i mean this is it it's you know freedom of speech is the best thing people's real opinions personalities i mean you know they might work for a common business and and be working towards common values and you know really believe in the same thing but they will all have different opinions loves hates personal you know personality traits that are so very different and you don't want to squash that you do you and become this beast that's exactly the same it's about diversity and it's about difference of opinions so you know there's got to be positives in that people speaking really free freely on um on social surely but i mean you know we uh, there is still this old perception particularly with more corporate businesses 
I should say, um, or this is what we're finding anyway, um, that it's a bit of a no-no and definitely they're interested in controlling the message to make sure it's on brand or, you know, and I guess that, you know, there is small elements of that, but there has to be that element where you let your people speak freely on there. Yeah. So we have a framework, which, we, which is our values, right? We hire for our values, we operate our business on our values, we fire clients, hire clients on our values. Everything is built on our values. And that's really important to us as a business. Um, my team know those values off by heart. So as long as they're operating within that framework, I don't care what they say online. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have we actually have a social media thing in our contract. So you know when you give employees contractors to be a social media section, it's only three pages long. Our thing is one sentence and it says use good judgment. In fact, it's not, it's two sentences. Clout does not have a social media policy, full stop, use good judgment. Yeah. 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 Like that's all we need you to do, use good judgment. I, I would I would prefer you didn't go on Twitter and start calling Ryanair effing and blinding and stuff because they yeah. locked the bag, but I can't stop you from doing it. And no. to be honest, I don't think that would impact my bottom line. If no. anything, you're probably going to get lots of other people that are pissed off at Ryanair following you and potentially one of those could turn into a client. So yeah, 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 absolutely. No, really interesting. So I guess on that point, any tips for remaining really authentic when building a personal brand? First of all, I hate the word authentic. It's like, so, like I use it all the time. So it's not, I'm not, it's not a ticker yeah. thing I say all the time. But it's it's one of those things where I was like, you need to be authentic. And it's like, well, what does that mean? What does yeah. authentic actually, it's like passion. Like what does passion actually mean? What does authentic actually mean? Authentic to me means being personable. It's being the person that you would be with your favorite client or maybe not your best friend because I certainly don't share what I would call private things on any of my social media platforms. You'll never see a picture of my children with their face um, because it's important to me that, that, that I keep some things private. But I am 100% myself down to, I will say crazy stuff on Instagram and, and be my normal wacky doo-doo self that all my favorite clients know me to be. And that's what I think is authentic. It's how you show up in your everyday life bring that yeah. to the online for you know sphere um, and the easiest way to do that is if practically anyway is if you have an idea about something just dictate it into your phone because then it writes it how you've said it so there is this weird thing that we all have and anyone that says that they don't is is lying or somehow rewired their brain that when we sit down to write something our brain goes we're writing a letter to the queen we have to make it sound very formal and unfortunately people read copy as if you were saying it to them so if i spoke to you like the queen you'd be like that's what? a bit weird <laughs> like, like you just your brain just goes oh we don't like that's too formal when you dictate your thoughts into your phone or into whichever you know use a recorder if you wanted to but your phone pretty much everyone's got the memo or the the dictation option now um, when you dictate things into your phone, it writes it how you say it and therefore automatically becomes more authentic, more colloquial and far more engaging to interact with. So that's a really practical tip for anyone who wants to quote unquote be as authentic as humanly possible is like, oh, I just came off the back of this webinar with fabric. Like, here are my three key takeaways. And you just say that into your phone or, um, you know, I just had this really, really amazing um, meeting with this client and like, here's what I'm going to be working on this year with them. I'm so excited. What are you excited about for 2021? That's so much more interesting than like, here are, you know, five things that you should be doing to make your copy much more exceptional than it would be otherwise. Like, people don't want to read that. Yeah, yeah. That's a great tip. Really, really useful. Um, and I'm sure loads of people will, will jump on that. Um, there's so many people, I guess, in our community who are looking to step into their first role or potentially change jobs. And, you know, we're right at the start of a new year. So we often are programmed to new year, kind of what's next for me? Where am I going here? How can investing in personal branding really create those opportunities for people who are in those situations, either first roles or, or looking for promotional progression? Yeah, so. Uh, there's two things to this your personal brand isn't something that's static right it evolves as you evolve so in my building of my personal brand i've gone from being a marketer a b2b marketer an employee engagement manager to running a personal branding agency so it, it ebbs and flows as you ebb and flow with your growth so don't feel like oh I, I, i'm not an expert in something so i can't i yeah. can't say anything about that no start if you want to be known as a marketing executive say you're right at the beginning of your career and you're like right i don't want to get a marketing executive role start putting content about marketing. Like go, go and look at Alfred Samba or the, you know, the guys at Gymshark, what are they talking about? That's really cool, let me share that. 
or go and look at what um, Pretty Little Marketer is doing or, you know, all those incredible brands across all these different channels. What are they talking about? Go and learn what they're talking about. Because I guarantee none of these people started, by the way, from anywhere. They were just like, oh, this looks like interesting. And we just post this. And now all of a sudden they've all got loads of followers. So if you want to be known for something, you start talking about that thing, even if you're not an expert in it yet, because you can grow into that role or you could change into something else. So you absolutely have to start now. Um, the reason why it's so important for you to do that is because most roles are not advertised. And that's a fact. And I know that because I'm a business owner and I do not advertise most of our roles because we know we're looking for a specific person for that role with a specific skill set. So as, as awful as it is to say, it's much easier to headhunt than it is to um Put an advert out and wait for people to come to you right so most advertising i think it's like 60 percent of job adverts uh, uh, jobs aren't advertised so if you think about that in context if you're only relying on the jobs that are advertised not only are you getting less of what is available but you're also competing against way more people because they're all the people that are all trying to compete for the same roles but when you start building your personal brand you attract people to you yeah. So I, one of the people I just hired recently, I hired them or I came across them anyway because they posted content on their LinkedIn page. So I was automatically like, oh, this person gets it. So let's have a chat with them about this role because that's the kind of person that I'm looking for. So I didn't even look at anyone else's profile at that point because this person kind of fit the thing that we were looking for and then we ended up hiring them. So when you start building your personal brand as someone looking for a role, looking to segue into something else or make a move in, for the new year, Start building it around what it is that you want to be known for. What is it that you want to be hired? What is the role that you want to be hired into? What do you want to be seen as um, advocating or champion, championing? And that doesn't mean you have to be an expert in it. It could be, hey, guys, I'm just at the start of my marketing journey. Here are three things that I picked up in the last week that I thought was really interesting. Like, could you give me many more advice? Or, you know, who are the best marketing influencers you think I should be following and learn from? Like, these are all things that are so authentic to someone at the start of their journey. And I would have loved to have been sharing this stuff when I was much much younger and right at the beginning of my marketing career because it would really would have benefited me um but you don't have to be an expert to be valuable you just have to show up yeah and to, and consistency I guess as well um oh, yeah. like no I I would rather every and I, I say this all the time and people laugh at me but I would rather you posted like b grade content daily yeah. than a grade content once a week like <laughs> consistency and by the way consistency doesn't mean frequency like I took a week break over Christmas because I'm, I'm not joking my brain was completely fried we were saying this before we started recording like so tired I just needed a break and as soon as I came back my first post did probably not as best as it, bad as it could have been but as soon as that was back normal like consistently posting is really important so if you're going to say you're going to do this you have to do it it's like I'm going to get the best body of my life this year and I'm going to give up alcohol and I'm going to go on do vegan January and all these things and then by the 17th of January 90% of people give up so don't don't be in that 90% just keep doing it interesting um, and I guess just on that point about um, jobs that you raised there, which I think is really interesting, particularly entrepreneurial businesses, um, we're not always necessarily hiring for a role. We often just see somebody who is epic and we go, right, they are going to be great for us. Let's make a role for them. So if you are building that brand and somebody spots you and then starts to watch you, often, even if there isn't an existing role that you're recruiting for, I know with our business, we will make a role to bring that person in because we can see the value they add and, you know, the, the impact that they will make. So, yeah, there's a whole, it's not always, yeah, yeah, completely. And I think that's very true of kind of, yeah entrepreneurial businesses who are far more able to adapt quickly but you know we all know good people are at the heart of every successful business so if you spot somebody who's doing an amazing job and as you say there it doesn't even have to be you know top knowledge it doesn't have to be the forefront of every trend it's just somebody who's got something um and we're able to spot those people then roles are often created for them so another you know another route to market there as well um Sometimes, and I guess this is a big one for a lot of people, um, people tend to feel embarrassed about posting about themselves or they tend to feel scared, particularly LinkedIn can be really daunting, can't it? Um, and I don't even think this is just for younger people. I think this is a just, a, you know, can be a bit of a scary place if you're not used to it. Any tips on getting past those barriers about building confidence and, and not over worrying or over analyzing what you're going to write? Yeah. So there's two tips I always give people. So the first one sounds crazy, but it really works. And it, so 
for anyone that's that's here right now and, and watches the recording of this afterwards, you'll probably be really surprised to hear that I used to be really shy. So when I was like even 15, my if I was in a restaurant with my family, my dad would have to order my food to, and say it to the waiter because I was so terrified of giving my order to this stranger that I physically couldn't do it. I had to get my dad to do it. I would never answer my house phone because I was so scared to speak to whoever it was on the on the other end. Um, and so this whole confidence thing I have now isn't just, I haven't just been born with it. I wasn't like this my whole life. Like it's taken a minute to get here. So the thing that I did in like my real life to build up confidence, which actually was unrelated to social media, but has actually helped me, um, was one of my friends told me once, Victoria Rush, she's also an f- amazing personal brand person. Um, well, she's not a personal brand person, but she has an amazing personal brand. If anyone wants to come and follow her, she's, she um, started the I Am move- uh, I am Enough movement around women's sport and stuff. She's very, very cool. She said to me, um, you should go and um, walk around the streets with your headphones in, selfie filming yourself, and just try and not give a shit about all the people that were laughing at you doing it. Um, so I started doing that, and that was like, really cool and then the next kind of elevation of that was I used to go whenever I used to go and get coffee in the morning on my way to work I'd ask for a 25% discount because I knew that they'd say no and it was almost like that exposure to like being told no was like good like it was affirming it was like yeah I I can do this I can handle no like that's that's fine um and every now and again they'd go like they'd be like you ask every day yeah fair enough (laughs) like have it for free Quite well, I got a free croissant once. So <laughs> I was just like, you ask me for a discount every single time. Just take the bloody croissant. Yeah. But yeah, so that really helped my like in-person confidence, if you like, um, which is really important as well. Like, I feel like if you're confident in your person out of to you. Yeah, I think that's good. It's it, You're way more confident online too. I think you have to be in your confidence first. So I think I, I would always advise people go and go and get confident outside um you know your life too don't just think of this as like a personal branding thing the second thing is if you're really worried about what people are going to think which you will naturally right because as i said earlier we're all hardwired to believe that everyone is judging us everyone cares everyone's talking about us they're not no one gives a shit about you they're more worried about their own problems but it takes a minute to learn that you can go and start commenting on other people's stuff so go and find a handful of influencers. I have a list of 10 people that are bookmarked on my Chrome that I comment on pretty much every single day Um, and go and bookmark their activity feeds and just click on their bookmark each day and just go and leave a comment on their most recent post. And what happens with that is you start interacting and you start building confidence in your own opinions on someone else's profile. So it's way less scary than sharing your own content. And what will happen is people will start seeing you pop up on these people's pages a lot. And they'll be like, oh, this person's really interesting. I'm going to go follow them. Yeah. You'll also find that people start liking your comments and wanting to have a conversation with you in the thread of that comment. And if that comment does really well, you could then go, oh, well, actually, I have the confidence to post that as a, as a piece of content. Because if I can post it as a comment and it's been well received, then that's given me the kind of dopamine hit I need to, in order to then get the confidence to share it on my own page and chances are if it's done well on someone else's page it will do well on your page and then that kind of begins this sort of self-affirming cycle of actually I've got this and I can do this and this isn't as scary as I thought it was yeah. um, the thing is you're always going to be scared when you do stuff at the beginning but growth only happens when you do things that you're like not qualified to do yeah. so I think it's really important that if you do want to do something whether it be personal branding changing your career starting in business doing a bungee jump like you know whatever I'm yeah. trying to match her for the first time <laughs> like you just have to do it otherwise and mo- more often than not it's a positive outcome not a negative one so yeah Yeah. And I guess just expanding on that a little touch, what I guess a lot of people are a little bit nervous of if the, if it's not just the physical posting and writing of it, it's the negative that they might get back. So um, we did a a great talk with this on, with Sophie Miller, actually of of PLM, um, who's on the call, I think. So a little shout out. Um, But yeah, like, you know, that terrifying kind of negative, what if somebody disagrees? What if somebody's, you know, not nice to you online? And, um, you know anything specific around just kind of getting over that or how to deal with those worries you know what it's taken me a long time to get so I'm not, I can't say this is a miracle pack because it I, in invariably especially women I, and maybe I'm and I'm a woman right so I can't really relate to coming from this from a male perspective but I feel like especially women we put such a great value on what other people think of us and so if anyone says even the tiniest thing we read so deeply into that 
into that what that person has said negatively that we almost make it a much bigger deal in our head and therefore a much bigger problem for, for ourselves so the thing that was really powerful for me is I've completely separated my social media from me so like it's it's 100 me it's authentic it's what i'm pers- i share what i want to share but i see it as a distribution channel of my personality not a place for people to judge me like i could not care less whether you like me or not like i'm totally indifferent like i i don't mind either way but what i do mind is that the stuff that's going out is the stuff that i believe in and that i feel passionately about and hey if i help some people along the way then bloody brilliant but those are distribution channels for my personality they're not channels for me to then get a fir- like affirming value like valuations from people being like you're good enough i know i'm good enough i know i am i don't need you to tell me that or to tell me i'm not good enough because either way it doesn't matter because i feel like i am so when you get into a mindset of this is just distribution of who I am rather than being a channel for me to get um, validation from other people, your whole mindset changes. And actually there's a, um, there's an article that I read, I'll have to dig it out that completely changed my whole mindset about that. Um, so yeah, I, if you can get yourself into a frame of mind of, yeah, this is the distribution channel and not where I'm getting my love and, and my work from, then it completely changes your life, not just your personal brand. Yeah, I love that. That's such such great advice. Have have you always been like that since the beginning of this then? Or has that get you that's grown and that's where you are now? Or no, I was not that way. I had to take a break from social. I had to take I had to delete my Instagram in February last year because it gave me such anxiety. Like because I, I like as I said earlier, like I find taking pictures really weird. Like I, I it's not, it's a bit icky for me. I don't I'm I'm not someone that wants to be in front of a camera all the time. I quite like being behind the screen and doing my little copy because that's my safe space um so I find being on Instagram and also like I've had eating disorders in the past and at the time I was going through a pretty nasty breakup with my ex-husband and so this whole kind of getting into social media and just scrolling through images of beautiful happy kind of inverted commas highlight reels of all these incredible other women just made me feel like a bag of shit so I actually took a step back and was like this is not good for me right now so I'm just going to delete it for a bit and then you know come back hopefully maybe never but I decided that that was the thing I needed to do and so a couple of months later I was like cool I think I've got this now I'm in a much better headspace and I actually don't think any of this is related to social media it's 100% related to where I was mentally and I was using that as a kind of almost like a bigger spade to dig a bigger hole of misery Um, and when I came back to the Instagram the Instagram I came back to Instagram with like that fresh mindset of like this is work this is your personal brand this is distribution my whole out my whole outlook's changed like not just on social media but my life like I'm now the happiest I've ever been I'm the fittest I've ever been like I eat really well I don't worry about silly you know things that people say to me in or out of social media I don't really let anything it's funny like the big things really don't bother me anymore and the little things I mean day to day but they don't really they don't really bother me anymore and I really do think it's because I took that break and took that step back and was like this is not good for me. I need to fix what's up here before I can do anything else with, with yeah. Instagram. And now like my Instagram's grown like in the last six months from zero to 3000. Yeah. Um, yeah. It doesn't sound like a lot, but we get leads weekly from that. So yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's what it's all about. I mean, thank you so much for sharing that, because I think it's important to show that side as well, because particularly people who are new to you, Amelia, today, you know, you look super confident, like you've got it together and you wouldn't be, you know, no comment would, you know, even bother you at all. But it's good to hear that actually that is a bit of a journey and you don't, you know, you don't just hit it's the starting line like that. It does sometimes take that little bit of building and that, you know, this is where you get to eventually. But I think that advice you gave before about starting out. Yeah, like I think when you I think when you get to a place and not to make this fluffy, but I do really believe this when you get to a place where you love yourself and you you validate yourself through your own competition with who you were yesterday. Everything else becomes irrelevant, because if you know in your heart you're a good person and you're doing the right thing and nothing really matters. Like, I don't care what Dave from Colchester thinks about my posting on Instagram. I'm like, cool, Dave. Thanks for the comment. Like, it it makes why would you care about? I know why, but like, if you think about it practically, why would any of us care about a stranger that we're never going to meet's opinion about something online? Yeah. I'm way more worried about what I think about myself or that my family thinks about me or my friends think about me because they know me. Dave doesn't know me. Yeah. 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 Completely. And there's plenty of Daves out there. So we just got to get, you know, forget them altogether. 
Okay, I'm going to finish our little bit on one cool question. Um, anybody who's got a burning question, start getting into the Q&A now. I'm going to go start working through yours in a moment. But what are the ultimate first steps to take for anybody on this call or who's going to watch the recording after who wants to start building a personal brand? What they got to do? So I think there's two kind of founding steps that you need to take. And if you get those wrong or you don't do them, then it's, it makes everything really hard. So first and foremost, you need to be super clear on what you want to be known for. So what I mean by that is what are the things that you're really confident in talking about? You can kind of build your personal brand on. So for Lisa, it might be marketing. For me, it's personal branding, entrepreneurship, startup life, and then I'm um, being hopefully a good leader and sharing all my wins and failures and things I'm finding interesting in, in leading a business right now, because those are the three things I'm really passionate about. So what are the three, two to three things that you're really passionate about? It could be social media. One of my, um, one of my team is all about social media and all she does is post about social media and memes that she's seen or trends that she's seen on TikTok and she's flying with that kind of stuff. Um, so get really clear on what you want to be known for. The second thing of that is who do you want to be known to? So who is the audience that we're trying to attract here? Like it's all good and well being like, I'm going to talk about marketing. Great. We can talk about marketing, marketing, and you'll probably get quite a good following in doing that if you do it consistently. But, but who do you want to be known to? Are you doing this for, um, you know, CMOs? Are you trying to attract CMOs? Are you trying to attract hiring managers? Are you trying to attract peers? Yeah. Um, are you trying to attract like work and social? They said on, on Instagram, they attract other social medias, other social media managers because they're a community. It's trying to build, she's trying to build a community of social media managers. Um, so get kind of clear on who you want to be known for. And then the level up from that is talking about it. <laughs> like it doesn't matter what it is that you, you might think what it is that you're about to say is so obvious and no one's going to give a shit. I promise you the thing, everything that I think about that about when I post it, it goes like today I posted something in promotion of this event and all the stuff that I listed was like, oh, this is so obvious. Like, why should I post that? Like, no one's going to think this is interesting. And everyone's like, oh my goodness, this is so helpful. Thank you so much. So what you think is obvious is gold to other people. It could be as simple as, I just graduated from my marketing degree and here are the three things that helped me get my first job. Yeah. Like that, you might think like no one is going to care about that kind of stuff, but people really do care. Like, and you're helping someone. So you'll start attracting people into your network that way. Yeah. Um, the fourth thing would be obviously be consistent, like in everything. Like you don't decide you want to get the sexiest body of your life, go to the gym for three weeks and go, oh, it's not working, give up. You know, you have to keep going for six months and then beyond that, go for the rest of your bloody life because yeah. you can't get to six months, go, well, I've got rock hard abs. Let's go eat some pizza. Like you have to keep going, <laughs> yeah. that body, right? And probably work harder because we get old and all the things. So you have to kind of see this as a lifestyle choice rather than a kind of like, project if you like this is now part of your who you are and what you do part of your job um and then the fifth thing would be um go and engage with other people's stuff so don't don't think that you can just throw things out and it's just going to pop off like it's called social media like asterisk social media people really over sorry people really grossly underestimate the value of being social on social media like like i connected with um sophie and pretty little thing because we've both been interacting with each other's stuff like i love being active and engaging and diving into other communities and talking about things that are interesting so go and find those influencers go and find those thought leaders and get involved in what they're saying as well it will be really beneficial not just to their communities but in trying to build your own um and then the final thing is don't feel like you have to be intelligent everyone go like particularly on linkedin to your point earlier lisa go on to linkedin they go oh my god i have to sound like i really know what i'm talking about one of my best performing posts was like a screenshot of something and i was like this is great and everyone was like yeah this is amazing and it got like twenty thousand reactions like one of my other team members posted a TikTok and it got like 10,000 reactions. And it was like, it was this really stupid TikTok that was just really relatable and really funny. Yeah. So like, don't think that you need to be quote unquote intelligent in order to be valuable, right? All you need to do is be, um, you, we, we have this kind of like four buckets I'm giving all the secrets away here that we um, know that cause kind of virality and growth and all those things. The first thing is you need enraging content. What do I mean by enraging content is, content that makes people feel like yeah like yes I agree with you or like no that's bullshit so it could be things like I, I posted something about I hate being called a female entrepreneur it gives me the massive ick I'm just like no why is my you wouldn't go oh love male entrepreneurs like yeah, yeah. Just, you're just an entrepreneur like what has female got to do with it or she EO or like all these awful things so I made a post about that and that just blew up right that's enraging because there's a lot of women who 
and men who agreed or disagreed with it. It's enraging content. It doesn't mean I'm being controversial or being rude. It just means you're championing a cause. The next thing is inspirational content. So that's like an inspirational story or, um, you know, I did this, I got from here to here by doing that or, oh my God, look how amazing this TikTok is of this person that was, you know, I saw one the other day of this incredible group of friends that helped their um, their their friend get up to the top of uh, the Great Wall of China because he couldn't walk and they carried him up there. That's really inspirational. Um, the third thing is um, it is uh, insightful. So giving giving a learning away, like can you teach people something? So like you know my thing I did today, which was like here are seven things that helped me build my personal brand to eighty thousand on LinkedIn. Like that's insightful, right? I'm I'm telling you a thing. And then the final thing is tell them something about you. Like, you know, this is my dog, isn't he cute? Or this is these, you know, this is my kid's first day of school and I'm literally crying in my car. That was something I posted a couple of months ago. So those four things, if you can hit, like do one of those a week, you'll be flying because you're hitting then every single part of what a personal brand, what your personality is, which is, you know, valuable, interesting, engaging, funny, you know, things that you're really passionate about and you're not afraid to have an opinion about. And then finally also giving people a bit of who you are away. I want to see your dog. Yeah. I want to see your kids. I want to see that you went on a roller coaster and your kid puked on you. It was really funny. Like we want to know that. That's what people yeah. want to know. There's a reason why the Kardashians are so famous for sitting around a dining room table eating salads. And that's because people find other people interesting. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, I'm sure everybody is scribbling frantically with that, but that is such, such amazing advice. Thank you for sharing all those secrets with us. Um, right. I'm going to get into some questions. I'm sorry. I've run a little bit long on our questions because there was just so much great stuff there, but Fiona, you were one of the first in, so I'm going to start with Fiona's question here. So Fiona says, I'm super consistent on LinkedIn, but TikTok and Instagram ran out of steam whilst making such video content. Um, how can she stay consistent across all the channels without it eating too much of her client time? And is it even necessary to do that? So I'd say first and foremost, I'd, I'd want to know where what kind of audience she has. So if her audience is on Instagram and TikTok, then yeah, absolutely go hell for leather on it. If they're not, then maybe like revert back a little bit and then decide where they are on. Our whole strategy is always nail one platform first and then start layering up on top of that. Um, the easiest advice I can give you on this, and it's like literally, it's how I run my whole agency. We do this thing called cornerstone content. So what I mean by that is once a month, and you know, if you're doing this as an individual, I would highly recommend that you find someone on this um, webinar now and buddy up with them. Maybe chuck in the chat that you want to buddy up and Lisa's amazing team can maybe sort you guys out, but buddy up with someone and jump on a Zoom call or even better in person and interview each other. Bring together a list of questions, say 20 questions each and interview each other with a ring light, microphone, get it all set up beautifully. Ideally, plug your phone in and use your phone to record it instead of your Mac or whatever computer you have because the camera on these things are terrible. Um, but your phone camera is a pretty good quality and interview each other. And then you can chop two things. You transcribe that the, the audio. Boom. Now you've got 20 posts or probably more, maybe 40. And then you can get um, go on Fiverr and pay someone to chop that video up into 20 different TikToks. That's our Reels, TikToks, LinkedIn. Done. That's yeah. your content plan finished. Don't even have to think about it. And that's how we run our whole agency is on that model. Excellent. Hopefully that's hugely helpful for, for everybody on here. Um, okay, next question. This one's from um, Abukin, who's one of our Fabric alumni. So this lady is going to rule the world one day. Well, I, I'm absolutely certain of it. Great question here. Um, with so many platforms like LinkedIn and Instagram, do you think having a personal website is still worth it and effective? Yes, I do. Um, I don't think it's necessary right in the beginning. I, so for context, I didn't even have a clout website for the first seven months. <laughs> Everything just came through my LinkedIn. Um, but the reason why I say yes is because there are two sides to this. Yes, we can all rely on social media to bring in leads, which we do. Like my company is 100% in LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, um, Pinterest. We get 99.999% of our leads come through, at least as a first touch point. They might come through our website, but they've found us on a social media channel. However, what if all those social media channels die or you get banned from them, which is, I mean, we're seeing on LinkedIn is, is you know, happening um, with big influences even. So if those channel distribution channels go away, you don't own any of that. They can just take it away from you. But your website you own, you own that data. So I'm building my website, ameliasodell.com at the minute, 
But what we're finding with our, well, our LinkedIn and stuff like that is if you can find a reason for people to come to your website for something, yeah. um, it might be that, you know, you have an archive of information on that platform, or it might be that you have an amazing mailing list that you send out one, a tip once a week, or it might be that you have your list of events that you're speaking at, or it might be that actually, if you want to go and um, see all the things that Lisa says, we put every single piece of social media content she's ever created ever in a stream, and that's her homepage. And if you can't be bothered to go on the other platform, you just want to see everything in one place, and it's all there. Like, it gives you a reason to make people come to your own thing that you can then capture their data and own their data you can't do that on social media platforms the social media platforms are distribution channels not ownership channels your, your website is your ownership channel so that's why i was always that's why i would always say have a website um particularly if you're doing this from a business perspective and this is all about you kind of gaining clients and customers and all that kind of stuff yeah great excellent advice um okay next question this one is from bella so you said post what you're passionate about a little bit earlier. Um, Bella is passionate about mindset and personal growth, and she's wanting to help women in elevating their sense of worth. Um, she said, I even have a program. Women and my clients are from different backgrounds. I've been told this is too wide and makes it difficult for me to scale. Any thoughts around that? What's the one thing that everyone has in common? Like, I, was, I can only go off the information that you've just said. Yeah. There, but well, the one thing there that everyone seems to, that you're going to have that every single client will have in common is they're a female. The second thing that you're going to find that everyone has in common there is that they don't feel like they're, they're worth much. And then the third thing that, you, that everyone's going to have in common is they want to be inspired by someone like you in order to feel the second thing I just said. So those should be your three pillars. Talking about topics that are really pertinent to being a woman, talking about things that um, make us feel invaluable, that we should we should stop doing, we should start doing, etc. And the third thing, sharing inspirational stories from women who really are incredible. Those yeah. those three things are synonymous with everyone in your audience. I think people find um, our brain is kind of wired to sort of pick holes and stuff and be like this isn't going to work because i'm talking about too many things like for example we have um a client who's got like seven different businesses and they all do completely different things so he's like well how can we how can i be known for anything because this one's a manufacturing company that's a tech company and we're like well what do you want to be known for and he was like just a great entrepreneur we're like boom let's talk about business yeah talk about leadership talk about culture talk about people talk about you know that that's synonymous with every single business you've built is it's been a success so let's talk about that Interesting. And, and again, great advice. Um, okay, a question here from Naomi. So she says, I'm in a corporate marketing role and have started posting. I'm conscious that management may not be a huge fan of me speaking about my work. What topics would you propose speaking about with being able to relate directly to the work that you're doing? So speak, it's, it's a really hard, really hard answer to, to give without knowing who you are, where you work, like all the things. Um, but I, I'm definitely a uh, do and apologize after kind of person. So this is what I would do. I would start talking about your work from a perspective of your specific job function, as opposed to the actual work you're doing. So if you're a marketing manager, for example, here are like the three things that I'm currently working on right now that I think are going to be really powerful in 2021, like community engagement, yeah. um, TikTok, something else but you're not actually then saying like, this is, I'm doing this on this channel with blah, blah, blah. You're not giving specific examples. You're just saying on a macro level, these are the three things that I'm working on that I think are really cool. Um, that way it's all about you and got nothing to do with the business. So it's very unlikely then that they can turn around and be like, you'll stop talking about us or because you're not, you're talking, you're like, you're talking about, I'm talking about it's not me. Um, so that would be my advice on that. But I, I also like red flag for a company that doesn't want you to be active on any kind of platform particularly if you're talking about the work that you're doing in a positive light because that helps them of course absolutely i totally agree with that and just before i ask one more question it's great to see the chats going absolutely mad with people's linkedin's profile who are wanting to buddy up so they've definitely loved that advice yeah, love everybody's that. going crazy with that so um okay a uh, question here from shona so where do you find the inspiration to write about every time i go to post something i'm never too sure what to talk about i mean i think this is a lots of people struggle with this right yeah so there's normally four reasons why people don't do personal build their personal brand number one they don't know where to start number two they feel like they don't have the time number three they're worried about what other people are going to say or number four they have no idea what to say so for me, the easiest answer to this is you have to consume to create. If you're not reading, listening, watching content, 
where on earth do you expect to get the inspiration to write it? Like it, you just can't. So I read a book every night, well not a book, but I read every night. I listen to podcasts every day. I go, when I'm at the gym, I'm listening to music or podcasts or audio books or whatever, just anything that I can shove in my brain that's gonna spark something. And as soon as I read something that makes me think, oh, that's interesting. I, I've got thousands of pictures on my phone of book pages, which is ridiculous. But I also dictate whatever my thought was into my phone. And then I can come back to it later and make it into some kind of like make sense, right? Because normally it's just some rand random rambling of something that I thought was interesting. And I can go back and edit it after. Yeah. So if you're not consuming content, you can't create it. So this is why we have writer's block, right? We sit down and go, I need to post something. And you're like, oh God, what am I going to post? And that's because you're forcing yourself to do something when you haven't had any inspiration to do it. You're much more inspired and much more, you know, interesting and interested when you've been inspired by something else. So just get into the habit of, listening reading watching stuff all the time just all the time like on your commute listen to a podcast like it's so easy yeah it's it's so interesting and I do this at the gym the very best time for me is I'll be on the treadmill listening to a podcast and I was listening to the Gymshark one with Stephen Bartlett the other day and just constant little things that come up and you think oh I've got an opinion about that oh this is really interesting or, oh I've been there and done that and this is what my experience was like so even random notes thrown in your phone can often spiral ideas that you can then at a later date go sit and write up properly but yeah again great thousands of those in my notes yeah. Yeah. Kirsty, who who um is our one of our social media executives just hates me because everything in my phone is just jumbled up madness but it's exactly that I've been on the treadmill and been like this is amazing and just like dictating it in my phone while I'm still running and it's just yeah. Doesn't make sense. But, yeah that's the best yeah. way excellent okay last question um are there any topics that are off limits when it comes to putting yourself out there I mean, you've got to use your own judgment on that. Like, you know, if there's things that you don't feel comfortable in talking about, don't talk about it because someone like me told you to. Like, yeah. I, I don't I don't talk about um, generally my private life. Like, you, I, I'm not on there talking about, like, person I'm dating or, you know, all that kind of stuff because for me, that's, that's not relevant. Um, I don't feel like I need to. Um, but I'll tell you about the fact that I cried in my car when I dropped my kid off at her first day at school or, you know... I drank too much on the weekend or like stuff like that. Um, I think you just have to use your own judgment as to what you are comfortable in sharing. Some people love sharing pictures of their kids and, you know, their husband or their wife or their partner, and they're totally okay with that. And that's 100% the right choice for them. But you have to understand what is the right choice for you and do that for yourself and, and don't feel pressured into kind of lifting the lid too much on your personal life as it's not what you do, want to do. I think a really good example of that, aside from myself, is Gary V. Yeah. He's never seen a picture of his wife, never seen a picture of his kids, don't know what his house looks like. He is 100% personal yeah. and is 0% private. Yeah, yeah, completely. Balance. Okay, great. Well, we are going to leave it there. I'm so sorry. We do have still a handful of questions flying in, but we're just about at time. So if anybody wants to reach out on socials of all places, of course, um, you know, I'm sure Amelia will be happy to answer those questions. I will also happily support if anybody wants to, to answer questions and or, or ask them on LinkedIn or any of the social platforms, you know, do drop them over there. Um, and you need to always open, by the way, if anyone does have a question, but if you can do it on like Instagram, because I actually still manage that inbox and you'll, you'll get me as opposed to my um, my PA on LinkedIn. So yeah, Instagram is the easiest place to follow. To there ask you go. You can, flurry of questions come in this afternoon. You know where they've come from. So <laughs> I'm ready and waiting. <laughs> Good, excellent. Um, I mean, everybody's been wonderful. Thanks so much for all the, the messages in the chat and the questions. It's been amazing. Amelia, you've been unreal. Like there's so much practical, informative stuff there that I think everybody can, can really get set and go with this. I mean, I don't know about, everybody on on here but I feel so fired up to just take a load of that advice and run with it and I think you've probably instilled a confidence in all of us that we just need to get over the worry and just get on with it and you know it will come confidence will come the expertise will come the community will come um so absolutely brilliant um, thank you so much. There is a whole range of Level Up webinars on the Fabric website. So if anybody wants to delve into any of the specialist subjects, jump on the site, you will see there's all sorts there that we talk about. Um, otherwise, I mean, get posting. Um, and anybody who's doing it for the first couple of times, feel free to tag me and Fabric or Amelia um, and Clout in your posts and we'll comment on them and hopefully expand your network and give you a little bit of feedback. But, you know, don't be afraid to get stuck in and give it a try. Um, you know, the only way is up essentially if you're there. 
Um, otherwise, have an amazing weekend and look forward to seeing you hopefully all next week for our next uh, Leaven Up webinar. Amelia, thank you so much again. Enjoy your weekend. Um, yeah, and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you so much for having me guys it's been awesome i think everyone though as a task straight right off the back of this is go and post now straight yeah. off the back of this, go and post something anything even the webinar. <laughs> okay we're going to be watching out for you guys you've put all your linkedin profiles in the chat so get posting okay have a great weekend everybody take care thanks again amelia thank you bye